Hey everyone, welcome to another video about Azure Service Bus. Today I'm going to be doing an introduction to the Azure Messaging Service Bus Library. It's a different one to the one I've used in the videos before, but this is the current and maintained active kind of Service Bus Library. And so from now on, we'll be using this library. So I'm going to look at how we use, uh, how we use this one to receive single messages, uh, to receive an IASync and new reward messages, or to create a processor, which is like a subscription to messages that we had in the old libraries, and then how we can send messages with this library as well. So I'm gonna dive into Visual Studio and start working. Okay, so now we're in Visual Studio. This is Visual Studio 2022 preview that I'm using. Um, so we've got our basic application that we've seen before. Uh, we're running out that we're starting our Azure Service Bus demo. We've got our connection string that I copied from the portal. Uh, we've got our queue name. Demo queue, I've got a topic and subscription name as well. And then what we're making is our service bus client. And so this is the kind of the entry point to the API from Azure Messaging Service Bus. I've added that as a NuGet package already. Um, but it's a service bus client is the main thing we're gonna use. And we make one by giving it the connection string. And so the first thing we're gonna try and do is uh, receive a single message. So we're gonna do client dot and then that gives us the ability to uh, create receivers, create processor, create sender, create session processor. So we're gonna create a receiver first and give it the queue name. So var uh, receiver equals create receiver. And so now we've got a service bus receiver. And so from our service bus receiver, we can receive message async. Sounds like a good one. Uh, and so var message equals await receiver dot receiver async and so what this does is this gives us um this gives us a single message from service bus so it'll just receive one message if we don't get a message we can pass uh, a time span for the maximum wait we can pass a cancellation token uh, or we can pass both uh, so i can say in here time span uh, from seconds five so we'll wait five seconds for a message to turn up if not, it will come. Uh, it will carry on anyway. And so, what we need to do there actually is say if the message does not does not equal null, try and write it out. I'm going to put in here actually that we received single message. Type better. Uh, actually, I'll give us a here just so we understand what's happening. I didn't receive any message. So if I run that, we'll just have a quick look, see what happens. I'm waiting these five seconds to see if we can receive a message. Oh, we didn't receive a message and then we ended. Uh, what I'll quickly do as well is I'll put a little console.reline at the bottom make sure the application kind of hangs around while we wait. Uh, and so that didn't receive a message. So what we want to do up here is do client.create sender for that same queue name. And then save our sender equals that. And then with sender, we can send message async. And when we need to pass it a new service bus message. Let's say this is a single, Single message that we sent. Uh, and we need to await that because that's an async method. So now when we run this, we send that message to service bus and then we do our single receive. So we should receive that message. Cool. So that works fine. What we need to do as well when we receive our messages uh, through our receiver uh, is we need to make sure that we complete our messages. So we didn't just do that then, which means we're going to have a message that kind of outstanding. That's async, so we need to do that. But we need to make sure that we receive our messages uh, and complete them. So we take them off of the queue and we don't end up processing them again. So the other thing that we can do up here with the sender is we can create a message batch. Uh, that's an async method, so we'll await that. And then for the, for the batch, We 
can keep adding messages. So we have try add message. And the reason it's try add message is if adding this message is gonna make the batch too big, you'll get an exception that's thrown. Otherwise, uh, it'll successfully add. Uh, and so we wanna do a similar thing. We'll grab that service bus create and put that in there. Um, This is message, and then we'll put in X in there. I'll need to make that interpolated so the X comes out. And so now we're gonna send 10, we'll send the single message and then we'll send 10 extra messages. And so what we'll do down here, in order to receive multiple messages, we can do a similar thing with a receiver. Um, and so we can say uh, receive messages async, before we use receive message, now it's messages async. Um, and that method, although it says async at the end, isn't async itself. You don't await that method. What that gives you back is an I async enumerable. And so the way you use those is you do uh, an async for each. I'll just put a message there because we need a different variable to what we used before in message enum. What we'll do is we'll just take out the same. We'll put receive multiple message and then write out that message body. And so each one of these is effectively uh, like a method that's like an async method or a task that's happening inside the for each. Every time a message arrives, it's gonna come into that for, for each and then it's gonna run the for each for us in this kind of background thread. And so if we run that now, what we will see um, We'll actually see the single message twice. Uh, why is this complaining? This is complaining because I didn't, I copied and pasted that code and I didn't change uh, the message variable. So I was trying to acknowledge the message that I'd already acknowledged up there. So we'll run that again. So I received the single message that we sent and then we should receive, uh, actually we won't receive them because I've just noticed. We added lots of messages to the batch. What I didn't do is do sender dot send messages async and pass it the batch. So now we're sending that batch of messages. Uh, we should get receive single message, which we did before, and then we receive the multiple messages. But we are receiving I've done the same thing again. Didn't change this either, so I didn't write out I didn't write out the new message that we received. The way you never copy and paste code. Terrible idea. Here we go. So this is the behavior we expected. So we received our single message, and then our for each, uh, our async for each kind of went through all the messages that arrived because we sent that batch. So we can send single messages, we can send batches of messages, we can receive single messages. We can receive back to the messages in a kind of one after another approach by using our async for each. But we can also, I'm gonna comment out our uh, multiple receiving code here. We can also do something more similar to how the other APIs used to work. Uh, we can create a message processor. Uh, so that is client.create processor. We'll pass it the queue name like we did before. And then our processor has two events on it. So it has process message async and then process error async. You have to handle both of them. Um, it will not allow you uh, to only handle one. So I'm just gonna put this first one in here. I'm gonna make the silly mistake of copying code again, but I'm gonna pay much more attention uh, to replacing it here and say var message equals arg.message. And then here, you don't use a receiver to complete it, you would use use those event args uh, to do the complete. And then the only complaint it's got now is that this is async. And so then, so you create the processor, you register your event handler, and then you say start processing. And then what I'm quickly gonna do just to illustrate this point is try this and then catch an exception console dot right line 
x all right so we're going to write the exception out if we get an exception doing this so let's run that and see what our results are so we do get this exception you cannot begin processing without process error async handler set so i much prefer the api before where you had to pass in the two uh, functions effectively for the process and the error to make it very clear that you have to handle both. Here you get an exception if you try and style it without handling both. Um, it's less clear as an API, but I guess more people understand uh, the kind of event concept that you have in .NET. Um, and so in here, we can just console.writeline arg, just string wire args, if that work. And then we, return task or complete task because we didn't do any async in this method. And so now we should be able to run uh, that with received, uh, I'll put that, received processor message. So we'll see that it's coming out through our processor. There we go. So we did the same thing. We ran it a couple of times uh, with the exception. So we didn't, um, we had the exception last time, so we didn't receive and, and, and acknowledge these messages, so we just received them again. Um, but that's effectively it, right? That's how you use this new kind of service bus API, this uh, Azure messaging service bus. This is the current one, which is gonna receive all the, uh, the updates in future. So we can receive a single message. Um, well, actually, let's go through an order. So we can create a sender, send a single message. We can create a message batch and then send a batch with lots of messages in it. We can create a receiver and receive a single message. Um, we can receive messages async and get an async enumerable back that we can do an async for each on. Or we can do it the kind of more similar to the way we did before. We can create a message processor uh, and then do the event handling um, the way we did before. So you have this method that gets called lots of times. The reason you would go for the processor as opposed to the async enumerable is if you uh, if you want to be able to handle, like if you want to keep the throughput up really high and you don't mind kind of out of order message processing, then what you can actually do is have that kind of prefetch a bunch of messages and then um, and then do parallel calls to this this kind of processor. So actually we can we could show that right now. If we sent um, a thousand messages in our batch, we would get a kind of understanding about how fast the processor works. So this is receiving one message at a time. It does a few messages a second. What we can do when we create our processor is we pass a uh, service bus processor options. We can say, hey, prefetch uh, a bunch of messages and then max and current calls. We can say, do, call us 10 times at the same time if we need to, All right? And so that's gonna enable us to, to have a lot more processing going on. It'll, it'll make more of a difference when you're not just writing out of the console and you, you're actually doing things. You have a lot more concurrency going on and so what we should start to see now is we're able to process those messages much faster. So this is one of the benefits of being able to do that, but it does mean, I'm gonna pause it by selecting here. What you'll notice is we've got uh, 570, 566, 572, 71, 72, 73, 75, 78, 80, 81, 74, 79, 77. So we are processing messages out of order, but we're doing it at a much higher rate than would otherwise be possible. So you have to choose this based on your use case as to what's important to you. So hopefully that kind of sums it up for you, uh, how we can get started with this new, new service bus API. Uh, and then in future videos, this is the one I'll be using because this is the, the one that's gonna kind of live the longest and, and, and receive all the updates moving forward. Hopefully you found this video useful. If you did, please hit like on this video. If you want to see more videos about Service Bus, Event Hubs, Azure, and software architecture in general, please hit subscribe. Feel free to turn on post notifications, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.